Good morning, everyone. Good morning. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of all the friends and members of Herondale Presbyterian Church, welcome to our worship service for this third Sunday of Easter. Uh, before I begin, there are a few changes we made. I will read my announcements. I'll close with a prayer and ask you to pray in silence, after which I will say amen, and Terry will play the prelude. Got it? That's what we did before uh, Palm Sunday. And so we're going to do that this time. I'll say it again. I'll read my announcements. I'll close with a prayer and ask you to pray in silence, after which I will say amen, and Terry will play the prelude, just like we did before Palm Sunday. The birthdays for this week are, today is Sarah Klaus's birthday. Sarah, let's give her a hand. Here's a hand. It's Imogene, Imogene Rogers' birthday also. On the 16th, two birthdays. Harriet Bolster, is Harriet here? Oh, she's celebrating. And Donald Hicks. Bob Glenn's big day is the 18th. Is he here? Oh, there he is, okay. And Manushka Honore celebrates on the 19th. Happy birthday to all. Uh, announcements, please pass the friendship pads as they are passed. Please sign the friendship pads as they are passed down the pews. And Sonia Bolton, my friend, has an announcement. Good morning, everyone. It's been a while since I've made announcements, so listen up. On April 27th, um, we are going to have a spring, fring, spring Fling Resource Fair. We had it last year, too, but we had it on a Sunday right after church. This year, it will be on a Saturday because we're trying to reach a, a broader audience. Um, it will be between 10 and 1. And we are going to have a cookout. So please, please, please come and join us. We are also going to have several nonprofit organizations set up tables in our fair to show the larger community resources in our community that can just help make life better. I'm going to read some of the organizations that's joining us. Of course, we are going to have a table. Um, our summer vacation Bible school is going to have a table. Girl Scouts and Ronald County Li Public Library is going to have a table. And they're going to have a really fun children's activity that they will lead. Um, Happy Helpers, In Spirited Counseling Services, Arundel House of Hope, Partners in Care, Glen Haven Memorial Park, Glen Burnie Fire Department. Um, our Boy Scouts from, that, that is hosted in our church, the Health Department, the University of Maryland Master Gardeners is coming, um, Caring Cupboards, Anne Arundel Community College, their Legal Study Institute is coming, um, Anne Arundel County Workforce Development, Bankers Life Retirement Company is coming. We are also gonna have Echo Adventure for children. So grandparents, moms, dads, bring your children, bring your neighbor. Echo Adventure is here for free, where the children can interact with animals of all kinds. So please come and enjoy this day with us. If you are an early riser, we are setting up at 9 a.m. tables, canopies. Um, please come and help us. Breakup will be after one, of course. But just come, enjoy this Saturday with us. It's gonna hopefully be a beautiful sunny day. Um, come for the cookout, we're gonna have popcorn, we're gonna have bubbles, we're gonna have, <laughs> let's bring our inner kid out, but also learn about what the community offers us. There are many, many things. So please come and join us. Tell your neighbors about it. Um, bring your, your neighbors, bring your grandchildren. Come and join us on April 27th. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. Any other announcements from anyone? No? Okay. Prayers. Continue to pray for those listed in your bulletin. And also, Tina Coleman's mother, passed away on Monday, April the 8th. Pray for Fred, Tina, and their family. And Marla and I taught Tina's sister, Becky Gardner, in school. So our condolences. Joys. Anytime I'm wearing this jacket and Robert Wagner is not, it's a great joy. It's a great joy, believe me. And also, just like Jackson Holiday for the Orioles, I've been called up from the last pew. He's struggling. I pray I don't. Thanks for being here, friends. Maybe I'll get a hit or two. Who knows? Now, 
let us bow our heads and pray silently to the Lord as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Amen. Please stand in body and in spirit. Our Lord, our God, we praise you. We praise you, our God, and you answer us. You have restored our lives. You have rescued us from the grave. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, number 350, The Summons. Thank you. 
You may be seated. When your soul is suffering in silence, call out to the Lord our God, who heals our brokenness, who lifts us up from the pit and restores our lives. Let us confess our sin. Lord God, in the light of your glory, we see the evil we have done, the suffering we have caused, the good we have refused, and the truth we have denied. Hear us of our sin, wash us in your mercy, and feed us with your grace, so that we may follow your way and tell the good news of the gospel. Amen. Rise up from the dust, cast off the shroud of sorrow, and put on the joy of the Lord. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Friends, before we are seated, let's greet one another as we share the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. Hello on YouTube, this is Jason at the soundboard. Like everyone here is saying to one another, I'd like to offer you the peace of Christ this morning. all ages today. So we've got, we're going to gather around the fire here, and I got some goldfish for you. See, you got, you get a treat for coming up today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Pass one to Mr. Bill for me. Thanks. All right. So we got our fire, and we got some goldfish. So today we're going to talk about one of the times after Jesus was resurrected, and he appeared to the disciples. He built a fire, he cooked some fish for them, and he told them they should keep on doing what he'd been teaching them while he was with them. But back up a little bit before that, they had decided to go fishing. And they hadn't caught anything yet. They were using nets. Folks would fish at night then because that's 
It was cooler, the fish would come up, not, you know, during the day when it was hot, they'd hide in the mud down low to keep cool, and they'd come up to the surface at night, make it easier to catch them. So they were heading back to the shore in the morning. They hadn't caught anything. Maybe they had some seashells in their net. I don't know, like we do. But they saw Jesus standing on the shore. They were kind of, that guy looks familiar. They were start figuring out who he might be. So they told him, he says, throw your nets over the other side. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> And they caught so many fish that they couldn't really, they could barely get it in to the shore. Their nets almost broke. And that's when Peter, they all started really realizing. And Peter was like, it's Jesus. And he dives into the water because that's, you got to love that about Peter, his enthusiasm. He messes up, but then he's also really enthusiastic. So, <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't always just, in the Bible, sometimes, Things have other meanings. Fish aren't always fish. What do you think fish were? Telling us more about. People. Good job. Noah got it before you, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Colin got it before you. Sorry. Colin. Colin got it. <laughs> so. He didn't want him to. I mean, I used a net to catch Colin there. But <laughs> what else can we use if we're not going to use nets? We're not going to run around and throw a net over people and drag them into church with us. What else could we do? <laughs> what other ways could we bring people to Jesus? Inform them. Inform them, right? If we're feeling bold, we can talk about why we believe in Jesus, right? We could uh, invite them to come to church or Sunday school youth group with us, come to the spring fling, come to some of the vacation Bible school, whatever. Um, kindness, show and love, those kind of things that Jesus told us about, we talk about a lot. So we don't have to throw nets and catch people. I forgot about the shells. I was afraid to put someone's eye out with one of them. So <laughs> let's say a prayer and we could head back to our seats. Dear God, we thank you that you show us ways of sharing your love and drawing people to you, that there's, there's as many different personalities in the world, there are many different ways that we can Use our gifts to bring people to you. Be with us all this week and bring us safe together again next week. Amen. Amen.
God of light. By the power of the Holy Spirit, restore our sight that in these words of scripture and sermon, we may see Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Our reading today is John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. You will find this in the New Testament portion of the Pew Book Bible on page 115. Hear what the word of God is saying to you. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it because there were so many fish. That disciple who Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the full net of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he had raised from the dead. When they were finished with breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, Son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Amen. I'd like to say that Bill Scott was up here for the children's sermon, which was great. I love to see that. Bill voted for Truman, I believe. Am I right, Bill? Okay. 
Now, is it a homily or a sermon? Well, I, I like to play with words. Homily, if you use all the letters, comes out to be I am holy. That's homily. On the other hand, sermon comes out to be snorm. <laughs> so I hope it's a homily. For the 40 days after Easter, Jesus was very busy. He taught his disciples as he prepared them for his ascension into heaven. And he was a teacher, which is a great occupation, so to speak, a teacher. His words give us a sort of roadmap to all of us as we think about his return to earth, and he is coming again. Jesus gave at least a couple of significant messages to his disciples. One message was that his resurrection was real, and we who are believers, and that's us here today, will inherit this wonderful gift wonderful gift. We know that Christ will come again, a promise that we Christians will forever know. Another message was that his disciples were responsible to carry out the message to the world. And aren't we all, all of us who are disciples, aren't we all disciples of Christ? So it's our job to carry out his message to the world. However we do it, it's our responsibility to carry out the message. And here's what we learned from Mary Magdalene's experience with the resurrection Lord. And what do we learn? Well, if we truly seek him, if we truly want to know him, then we will find him. Now, the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples was at the Sea of Tiberias. As it is written, seven of the disciples had gone fishing. They were Simon Peter, James, John, Thomas, Nathaniel, and maybe, though not recorded, Andrew and Philip. These seven went fishing at night because that's what they do best, fishing. And they caught not one fish. At that time, Jesus was standing on the seashore. And the disciples did not recognize him. Now, early in the morning, Jesus was still standing there watching them. And I can imagine him cupping his hands around his mouth and yelling, cast your nets on the other side, guys. Or maybe he whistled. I can't whistle. Anybody here can whistle like that? No? Okay. Maybe he whistled to get their attention. Whatever. He told them to cast their nets on the other side because they weren't getting anything on that side. Well, they catch so many fish, and it's so heavy that they aren't able to draw the net in. It's at that very point that John realizes that, hey, that's Jesus over there. And Simon Peter is so excited that he jumps into the water as the other disciples follow in the boat with the fish. Now, at this point, I have a confession to make to all of you. I don't like to fish. I'm sorry. I don't like to fish. I probably would not have been one of the disciples on the board, on the, on the boat, unless it was Jeffrey the non-fisher. <laughs> Who knows? I consider myself a disciple of the Lord, and all of you here today are. I just don't like to fish. But back to my dislike. I think it stems from when I was about 10 years old. My brother Byron, who was 16 at the time, must have been stuck with me for the day babysitting. Now, before I go on, I want to tell you about Byron. He was an outdoorsman, the real deal. It always... Uh, I always thought that he should have been born in the 1800s instead of the 1900s, really. He hunted and fished with the best of them. He once flew to Argentina to hunt wild animals from our little town in southwestern Pennsylvania to Argentina to hunt wild animals. He took his trusty rifles with him, and that was when you could bring anything on a plane, and he did. 
and I'm sure he caught a lot. We as a family drove to Wisconsin in 1960, and Byron drove Mom, Dad, and me to West Bend, Wisconsin. After we arrived, I played with my friend Dale. We had a great time. And Byron went fishing on Lake Michigan. There's a picture of him holding what could have been over 100 fish, possibly 153. Who knows? But back to my dislike of fishing. Byron took me to our town's water dam or reservoir to fish. He brought two rods with him, one for each of us. Then we looked for a couple of branches with forks in them and found forks that where we could rest the poles after casting out. Now, I was a restless 10-year-old, and he was in his element. So I said, okay, brother, what do we do now? He said, we sit and wait. <laughs> really? No way. No way. I wasn't going to sit and wait. But I did, because I was being babysat. Well, he probably caught fish that day, and I didn't. I still remember it vividly. And that's my story for the dislike of fishing. Grandson Xavier loves to fish. No thanks to granddad. Now let's get back to telling Jesus, to him telling his disciples from the shore, hey guys, cast your net out on the other side. Something jumps out at me about that. Suppose Jesus wasn't there. They may not have caught any fish at all, but he was there. And suppose we are doing things the same way over and over again. Perhaps we need to do things differently. Is showing up on Sunday enough? Is attending Sunday school enough? Is contributing food for the food pantry enough? Is Jesus here every Sunday? Well, he's here like this, but he is here. We meet him, and he meets us. Is he attending Sunday school, and are we learning about him while he learns about us? Yes. Do the folks who come for free lunch twice a week see Jesus in those who are cooking and serving? I know they do. And does Jesus see these workers doing what he would have them do? Yes. Do the workers at the food pantry convey Jesus to those coming to HPC for food? For sure. Friends, it is the third Sunday of Easter. As I said on Easter Sunday as liturgist, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. But the hoopla, if I could use that word, of that day is now 14 days old. How have we changed? Are we still going fishing? Are we casting our nets on the wrong side? Change is not easy. Look at where we sit each Sunday, and don't get me started on that. <laughs> that hasn't changed and probably never will be. So I couldn't say to you right now, change where you are, you won't do it. Oh, we greet people. Maybe we could greet more people during or after the service. Have we changed the look of this church? Don't need to. It's a beautiful sanctuary. But wait, there's a place that used to be the sanctuary of this church, the fellowship hall. Here's a place ripe for change. Every time I look at it, and I'm up there three times a week, it looks so incomplete. And we want this to be a memorial for our dear Sam Schaefer. But we keep casting our net on the wrong side. I believe we have some money in the general fund. Perhaps we could use some of it to begin work on the hall. Perhaps uh, we, I envision that as people see what's happening, that more people would contribute their time or money, and that someday the hall would be complete. What a great tribute that would be to Sam. In the hallway are pictures of our elders, trustees, deacons. Get to know these servants of the Lord. Perhaps call, email, see an elder or trustee suggests that we need to work on the fellowship hall. 
It would be a change in the right direction. If not, then we continue to cast out for change and we aren't doing it correctly. Sam's in heaven. We know that. I imagine that every time a Herondalian passes into eternal rest, that Sam asks the question, how's good old HPC? And I can see him smiling and asking that question. And the dearly departed person says, it's fine, Sam. We have a new minister. He's doing a great job. Then he might ask about the fellowship hall. Hmm. It's not being worked on, and it's not complete. And he would be disappointed, as Sam ever would be. I've never, never, see him, never saw him disappointed, but he probably would be. And we know that Sam was not a person who was easily disappointed. Now back to how we have changed. Do you know how many members we have who are 70 years of age and older? Anybody have a guess? Lee? 81. 81. And I'm in that group. Who else is in that group? There you go. 81. Wow. We are an older church. So I guess what I'm saying is, what do we do now? How much time do we have? The next solar eclipse will be in 20 years. Are you making plans? Well, maybe you are. I don't know. The next full solar eclipse passing over Glen Burnie will be in 75 years. Still making plans? At this point, I'd like to bypass the session and appoint the Clifford children in charge of planning and sending out invitations. <laughs> Silly, I know. Terry and Sheila, would you welcome new choir members? Sure, I'm sure you will. Did you hear that, Gordon? Where's Gordon? Where's Gordon? Did you hear me, Gordon? You liked to sing in the choir, didn't you? Or you sang in the shower. I forget which one it was. Robert Wagner, didn't you tell me that you wouldn't mind singing in the choir? Didn't you say that, Robert? Yes, you did. You said that last week. I'm holding you to it. Maybe you and I could be there together and sing in the choir. Sharon Mike, I'm sure you would welcome more members to your Sunday school classes. Maybe someone here would like to do some research and do some teaching of their own. There are many lessons to be taught in a variety of ways. Now, I'm guilty of not wanting change. I am. For crying out loud, I've driven a minivan for the last 11 years. Help me, Lord. I've worked with Marla for 25 years in the food pantry, and she knows we can't go on forever. Now, a few weeks ago, these 40 days guide us as we contemplate his assured triumph triumphal return to earth, his assured return to earth. When is the second coming of Christ? We don't know. No one knows. It could be today. It could be right now. It could be next week or it could be 25 years from now. How many times does the Bible mention the return of Jesus? The second coming is emphasized in no less than 17 books of the Old Testament. 23 of the 27 explicitly referred to the second coming of Christ to this earth. There are over 300 references to the Lord's coming in the 260 chapters of the New Testament. That's one out of every 30 verses. So how do we prepare for the second coming of Christ? Now, here are seven ways I'd like to tell you. Number one, live in the light of the first coming, which I think we're doing. Number two, be discerning. And I hear that in prayers, people say here. Help us to discern. It's a spiritual char characteristic of sound judgment for screening the difference between righteous, right, wrong, good, and evil, and identify God's will and direction for his people. Number three, accept the uncertainties. We know that. 
we're going to have uncertainties. But believe in God. Number four, don't lose hope. Don't. Number five, encourage one another. And I think we do that. Encourage one another. Live as if today was the day. Don't know. And keep on doing the work Jesus has left us to do. Those are seven little hints to help you. Now, during communion, the pastor states that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Tracy Davenport added to that, and he is coming again. She always did. The first time she said it, I was so happy to hear it. She said it with conviction, and he is coming again. I told her how much it meant to me. We sat in the balcony. See, we changed. We sat in the balcony at that time. And she would purposefully look at me and say with conviction, and he is coming again. So be prepared. Amen. Now, if you remember, I want to pass around love in this sanctuary. And when I'm up here giving a sermon, I want love to be passed around. I'll start by saying I love you, because you're all my brothers and sisters here. And hopefully that person will say back to me, I love you. So make eye contact, wave your hands, talk to the person next to you, stand if you want to, and let love fill this sanctuary. Share, I love you. I love you. Wes, I love you. Love you All right, go ahead. Come on, let's hear love. Come on. I love you, Terry. I love you, Marla. Sounds good. Love you, Bill. And now, let's stand. It doesn't say do. Let's stand and say what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. Jesus calls us to feed his lambs and tend his sheep. Let us show and share his love through the offering of our lives. Thank you. 
Worthy are you, O God, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Receive these gifts of thanksgiving and praise and use them for your glory and the good of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lamb. Amen. For the prayers of the people and the Lord's Prayer, today I will read each person's name on the prayer list and give you some seconds, 10 seconds, to pray silently for that person, after which I will say, Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Before I get to the people, there's trouble in the Middle East, and so we need to pray for those innocent people who are being subjected to warfare. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Since October the 7th, there have been hostages held and families not knowing where these hostages are. Let us now pray for the hostages and their families. Amen. We pray for Dawn Hastings as she recovers from back surgery. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Bob Sharp as he recovers from surgery for a broken hip. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Bob Tucker, who has health issues. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We pray for Robert Button, recovering from a stroke. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We pray for John Bidwell, recovering from cardiovascular issues. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We pray for Emmy, who has Guillain Barr syndrome. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We pray for Doug Martin, who continues to gain more strength each day. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We pray for the floors who are regaining their strength after illnesses. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We pray for Drew McKinney, who is recovering from a severe fall. Amen. We pray for friends of the Kolars. Sarah, Matt, Frank, and Jenny are working through difficult circumstances. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. 
Amen. We pray for Jason Coleman's cousin Brian, who has cancer. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. We pray for the families of those who have gone before us, Deborah Coleman, Don Hartzell, Patience Hastings Spain, and Mary B. Wolf. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. And now, friends, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, follow me. Amen. <laughs> 